Today I'm going to be going over all the tools that I use to make shoes. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to the channel. If you're new, make sure to subscribe. And if you're coming back, thanks for checking it out. Make sure to hit that like button. Let's get right to it. So today I'm going to be talking about all the tools that I use. I got a whole list of them. I'm going to get right into them. But first, what do you think of the lighting? I got a lot better lighting now that's going on. I'm super happy with it. I'm going to be changing colors back there too to just change it up and uh, throw some stuff in the background. But so far, looking pretty cool. All these tools that I'm be using, I'm gonna put a link down in the description so you could use them yourself. So first of all, X-Acto knives, sharp X-Acto knives, as well as I got the interchangeable blades. I pretty much cut everything with these, either that or scissors, but for the most part, to get really fine edges, I use X-Acto knives, they're super easy, they're super cheap. As I said, uh, they got changeable blades, so if you spin this, then it comes right off. Let's see if I could spin this off. If you spin it, it comes right off. You could change out the blade so it's super easy. Next are leather tracing pins. What these do is when you heat them up, they disappear so then you don't have to worry about um, them staining the leather or anything like that. I got blue, I got black, red, and white, but I mostly use white or silver just because I use mostly dark materials so it really uh, shows the lines that you need when you're tracing stuff out and you need to either cut it or line it up. Next is a scythe. I've been having a lot of questions asked on how you use this, so I'll be doing a video on that soon. As you can see, it's just a blade on top of this tool, and you pretty much just shave it on leather to make the leather a little thinner, so when you double layer the pieces together, it actually goes flush instead of having you know, one over the other. So as you can see, I've used this in the previous videos, and this is, uh, this is really a must. As you can see, you got different size holes, and what this is is a hole puncher. You punch the hole into the leather, you make the loops for the laces, and it's just, it's really reliable. It's super cheap, it's affordable, but it's a lot better than, you know, hammering um, the, the stick into the leather and trying to make a hole. My lasting pliers, this is what I use to last the material. I pull the material onto the last. This is definitely a much needed tool. Uh, you really want a nice, high quality one, as well as a nail remover on the back. You don't need that, but mine comes with it. And then you got a little hammer on the bottom, so if you don't want to use a hammer, then you use a little hammer bottom right here. But pliers, as you can see, it has the grip teeth on it, so it's really um, easy to pull the leather. But sometimes if you got um, thin material, you don't want to rip it too hard, so you just want to just take your time, but really be able to pull it. As you can see, so this piece right here, it's actually made to get torque, so if this is the the bottom, you want to use it, and then you use a torque by pulling it. So the leather's still in here, but you're using this block to push off of the bottom, and then you know you place it down. So that's mainly what that's for, but I use it to, for a little hammer. This is a seam ripper. What it does is you push this long piece underneath the seam, and then it rips it on the on the sharp edge, if that will focus. The sharp edge right there, if you see that glare. So it pops right underneath, you rip the stitch, and it's a seam, stitch, ripper, whatever you wanna call it. But that's what I use it for, so if you're, uh, if you're taking apart some shoes, you put this underneath the seam, and you ride it right across, and it'll cut the seam seamlessly. And you uh, use a red point for the, for like the guide. But I mean, this is something that you'll definitely use a lot. Uh, you might go through a lot of these just if um, if the point doesn't stay sharp, you know, if it gets dull, but they're super cheap and expensive and this is a must need. So this is just like a like a point. I don't, I don't really know what this is called. I guess just a sharp metal piece. I don't know, but I use it a lot. I use this to take the seams out of the soles for the Jordan, so I bend it underneath it and then I pull the thread up and I keep going until I uh, pull them all out as well as I use them to punch the holes for um, tracing stuff out as you can see it's still sharp and um, it's just it's just a really nice tool to like rip stuff out in small areas but I mainly use this for uh, for the seams on the soles hey guys real quick if you'd like to help support me Go get yourself one of these t-shirts. I got these in tie-dye as well as black. I got the other logo as well. This is my personal favorite one, the tie-dye with the bleached, as you can see. So go cop yourself one. It's gonna be on my website. So if you'd like to get one, the link's in the bottom, down in the description, and let's get right back to the video. This is, so this is like a hand stitcher for the soles. 
if it wants to focus. As you can see, it has like a little fish hook at the very end. So what you do, I'll be showing this in the next video once these shoes get the soles on. But what you do is you push it through the sole, you hook your thread around, you pull it out. That's what the, the fish hook there is for. You pull it out and you knot it. You keep going and you do that around. But this tool is for pushing it into the sole so you could pull the thread back out and you're using heavy duty thread so you need a nice strong tool. So you pull it out and then you're able to tie it. But this is, I guess, uh, I guess you would call it just like a hand stitcher, but like a hand sole stitcher. This is glue right now. I got this. It's weld wood contact cement, the original, but I normally use barge. I have that coming in that will probably be here the next day or two, but I ran out of that. So I got this at Walmart. As you can see, just normal contact cement. You use that for the bottom. As you could tell in the, my last video, go check that out. I used it all underneath here to connect all the pieces together. So that's the type of glue that I use is contact cement. So this is the other glue that I got. This is a, some of the bars, but this is in a smaller bottle, all purpose contact cement. I got this on Amazon, super cheap. Um, I pretty much use this to stick all my stuff as well. So these are the two paints that I use. If I'm saying it correctly, Posca and then Angelus. Um, I'm sure everybody knows about these two. Um, when I'm painting the shoes, you know, get some nail polish remover, some deglazer, stuff like that. Uh, prep the shoe. Then you use these bad boys and make some cool uh, paintings on shoes. But these are the these are like the leather paints that I use. I haven't really used any other ones out, so hey, hit me up if you if you got any other uh, paints. But this is what I mainly use. This is at the stores and on Amazon. This is on Amazon. So these are the paints that I use. So the sewing machine that I got right there is a Conso 29 BL. It has a walking foot. It has the long arm going out as well as the, the hand roller right there. As you can see, um, it's, it gets used every day. It's a stinking workhorse. It's a big old industrial machine. If you don't want something like that, you get the heavy duty um, little table sewing machines as well as you get a post bed. You know, the one that has a stick up and then you, you sew over it. I'll probably have that pretty soon. But you know, this is what I use, Conso 29BL. You go check that out. If I can, I'll, I'll find like a link or some, something like that so you can see what that machine is. But I get asked all the time what machine to use and that's what I use. So these paper clips, I think are a much need. I don't know why, but I find myself using these a lot by connecting pieces of leather together. It's just one of those weird things that you don't know that you need it until you need it. Um, I use the heck out of these, mostly the big ones. Small ones sometimes come into play, but I like the big ones because they're, they're taller, so then you're able to get more material on it and clip it. But this is, this is one of those weird ones where I would recommend that you have these laying around because you just never know when you're gonna use it. So this is a bone pick if, if that's what it's uh, called, but it's bone. This is for pushing into the side of the sole. So when the acetone fills up the shoe and you remove the sole, I'll be making a video on that. You pretty much shove this on the side seam. So then as you can see, you do this little maneuver and it pretty much like pushes the, the outside of the sole from the inside leather of the shoe in order to go all the way around. And then you're able to remove the sole. Then you use the sole for pretty much your own custom. So this is what this tool is used for. It's super easy. Some people, you know, will use uh, screwdrivers. I don't know why, because you could rip all the material. So get yourself one of these. Uh, it's much needed. Um, it's super cheap and expensive, and you'll definitely be using the heck out of this. The next is brushes. As you can see, it's all scuffed up from being the glue brush, but I got lots of these. I have them always laying around, whether I have to paint something, whether I have to glue something, but this is a, this is a much needed tool. I guess you could call it a tool. I use it for a lot of stuff, but I mean, for the most part, for shoemaking, this is a glue stick. Next is lasting nails. As you can see, it's pretty much just a nail, a nice skinny nail with a flat top. So when you hammer it into the sole, it will stay. But this is, uh, this is what I use to last all the materials onto the shoe. 
As you can tell, these are what all of these little nails are. Get them in mass quantities because they're super cheap. So you're able to just, you know, drill as many as you want in here and you don't worry about if you bend them like this or if you get them all glued up or anything because they're super cheap, they're super easy and they're really a much needed thing if you're really trying to last. Next is tape. You need tape for everything. Um, I tape everything down, either that or I have double-sided tape double sided taping by using the two pieces of leather to stick together and then you stitch right over it. Um, I use this for all my projects and this is something that you would need. The next is Sharpies. I got every single color. I got every single, um, whether it's fine point or the big point. I mostly use them for art projects, but sometimes if I have to trace something out and I know that it's gonna be covered and I don't care what it looks like because it's gonna be covered, I'll use a Sharpie so it gets a nice bold line. But I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, Sharpies. You know, you just draw stuff around. And... Next is hammer. Hammer stuff in. So either if I'm hammering these nails in or if I have to hammer some, you know, material like that, stuff like that, whether I'm hammering other stuff, uh, you always need a hammer. Just a small little hammer, you know, it's not too crazy, just enough to get the job done. Super 77, multi-purpose adhesive spray. So what is this for? This is for, um, this is like glue spray, ch -ch -ch. adhesive spray. You pretty much use it to glue um, two materials together, but then sew it around. So you pretty much do that to temporarily glue it. That's what I use it for. Uh, you know, just random leathers, but that's that's what I use to connect, you know, full pieces together. You don't want to do it on pieces that might be exposed because then obviously it's sticky and you don't want that. So this is thread. You want to buy pretty much every single color if you can. You never know when you're going to be sewing something. You're like, I actually want this other color. Then you're like, well, I got to wait a day or two on Amazon. And sometimes, you know, waiting a day or two isn't that bad. But if you want to do it at that point, I uh, highly recommend uh, get these off of Amazon. They're super cheap and expensive. You get a lot of colors. You can pretty much get whatever you color you want, as well as there's some multi-colors or glow-in-the-dark ones that are cool, so definitely get this. Next is screwdrivers. I have uh, lots of these just for that bad boy over there. Um, you, you never know what you have to change out or what you need to loosen up, tighten up. So I just have these laying around. Shoe trees. This is uh, something that you really want if you, uh, you know, if you're taking pictures of shoes and you really want it to like have its structure, then you slip it in, you know, and it'll give it its structure. This is a, uh, you don't really need this, but they're super cheap, so might as well have them laying around. I only have one pair, so you only need one pair at a time, but this is pretty much, you know, for taking pictures of shoes and giving it that structure. Next is a lighter. You get these, you know, at any store. This is what I use to um, burn some of the ends of the thread. If I have any like frayed, I'll just I'll just hit them at the very end so then they'll shrink down and then it looks super clean and flush. But I mean, you could use this for a lot of stuff or mostly what I use it for is just burning the ends of thread. If you're using a sewing machine, you definitely should know what this is. This is lube, this is oil. Um, you got to pop it into all the holes that you need to do, you know, either daily, weekly, however frequently you uh, use your machine. This is something that you really need to do. You need to keep your uh, maintenance up on the sewing machines. You want to give it love. It's giving you love. So, you know, just get a bottle, fill her up, and so you're able to, you know, fill it up whenever you need to and throw it right into the machine. But I mean, this is something that you need to do. It says in the uh, owner's manual, not enough people talk about it, but get yourself some. These are needles. You want lots of needles laying around because sometimes you're breaking them. But as you can see, just a nice needle. Um, you could get them at any, si any size uh, for your machine. Just look it up either in the owner's manual or you could Google it but you'll need lots of these because you don't want to have just one or two and you go through them in a day or a week, whatever the time period is. So just have these laying around. As I said, they're pretty cheap. They aren't that expensive. So definitely have these laying around. So ruler or like a tape measure or have another one that's um, like a fitting one where it's bendable. But you want this, if you're measuring stuff, you want everything correct. You don't want anything off. So just a nice simple tool ruler. If you want a good cutting mat, I'll put it down in the description as well. You're definitely going to be using this all the time, all day, all week. 
So get yourself a nice cutting mat that's you know big enough to put your materials on, not too small where sometimes you have to keep moving it or it hang or your material hangs over. So get a nice big quality cutting mat. This is an optional one. You don't need it, but I use it a lot. Heat and gun. Uh, heat stuff up, you know, uh, be able to bend stuff, stuff like that. You know, this is one of those tools where you don't really need it until you need it. You'll obviously, you'll just somehow have a problem. You're like, well, geez, I, uh, I really need a heat gun right now. I don't know why, but sometimes you just need that. So have this laying around. I also use it to dry the paints when I'm painting shoes. So that's what I mainly use it for. So if you're paint shoes, you could use this to have a faster drying time. So that's about it. If you also make shoes and I maybe uh, miss a tool, make sure to comment down below and I'll uh, throw it out in another video. But that's pretty much all the tools that I use. I'll throw down all the links in the bottom. That's pretty much what I do to make shoes like this. You know, those are all the tools I need. You don't really need much tools. That's probably the most expensive part, that and buying the soles. But you know, all those, uh, all those tools is what I use to make these shoes. Um, if you get all of them, you'll definitely be in, you know, the right hands to be able to make a pair of shoes. Thanks for checking out this video. If you want any other videos like this, like maybe where I get my leather from, different materials, where I could get sales or stuff like that, let me know if you want to hear about that. I'll make those videos as well. But thanks for checking this out. Make sure to like, subscribe, check out all my other videos. I really appreciate it. We're growing like crazy. Hopefully you like this lighting. Let me know if you know this looks better. Maybe change the color back there. But I appreciate it. Until next time, see ya.